Guys, this is a history podcast. Sure. Serious. Let's talk presidents. In fact, let's talk all of them in order. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that was it? Hold no, on. No, 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 no. Just wait. Let's talk Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, Adams, Jackson, Van Buren, Harrison, Paul, Tyler, Polk. Taylor, Fillmore, Pierce, Buchanan, Lincoln, Johnson, Grant, Hayes, Garfield, Arthur, Cleveland, Harrison, Cleveland, McKinley, Roosevelt, Taft, Wilson, Harding, Coolidge, Hoover, Roosevelt. No. No, hold on. Give me a second. <laughs> Hoover. Yeah, it's Roosevelt. Truman. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I'm saying. Second. Yeah, yeah. Truman, Eisenhower, JFK, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, Carter, Reagan, Bush, Clinton. Bush, Obama, Trump. Did you say no. Obama now? <laughs> <laughs> Obama. Wow. Obama now. It took me all night. Damn, dude. You, just, you you studied for that all night? No, it took a half hour, but it was pretty That's intense. pretty good. Yeah. It's insane. I had to keep practicing. I was doing it before bed. Do the like vice, I was praying. Do the vice presidents. Adams. Are you seriously going to try? <laughs> no, I could go. I think I could Here's go. Here's a good decent. piece of trivia, and don't look it up. Nope. Okay. Here's a, a quiz question. Who is a, a, who is uh, Johnson, Lyndon Baines Johnson's vice president after Kennedy was shot when he who became the vice president? I, your mother's cunt. Oh, man. It wasn't her. <laughs> it, was not. it wasn't your mother. It was her cunt. Her cunt was a... Re- <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Dude, this is a history podcast. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> what if that was true? <laughs> You're telling me. <laughs> Jones cunt. <laughs> yeah, because they only he only needed her for one year. And She's then when he so ran excited. for... Well, then when he so ran, excited to watch this. Then when he ran... He got somebody else, but he was like, he called up, Joan, I need your cunt to be <laughs> my vice. He called her from Dallas. You know that famous picture of him on the plane? <laughs> that was. He called her right before that. I need your vagina to be my prison, my vice president. All right. So let's start from the top. Mom, I'm so sorry that he said that. <laughs> I'm not. I never met your mom. <laughs> You very held back. You held very back. Sweet. Very sweet. Very You're sweet. You're f- <laughs> All right. Let's start with Washington, dude. Yeah. What do you guys know about him? What do you say? I mean, Washington is Never like lied. a uh, uh, transitionary guy because he was he was so British. He was a British general. Mm. He wasn't like a, you know, he wasn't born in the America. He, he didn't create America. It wasn't even his idea. Yeah, he was a he was just a tool of he was a the first general president. No, he was born in the U.S. No, I know, but he wasn't like he was a Brit. He was a yeah. He, he fought in the Brit. French and Indian yeah. War as a British. Yeah, yeah. He's a lord. Wasn't he actually he? kind of sucked in that in that war. In fact, also kind of everybody in the, sucked in the wars. Though. Everything he did was retreating. <laughs> it was luck to be to to win anything. Then yeah, he was good at retreating. That was like his number one. The thing, important thing to be which good is at. Very good. In war, they don't otherwise you, you lose once. He got he would fight again because he retreated so well. Yeah, it's pretty tight though. Show up, and be like nah, and yeah. just run away. And like nice. Seventeen eighty nine. Yeah. That's when he started. All well, right. most of the guys, uh, it was so hard. Like a lot of the army didn't want to be there mm-hmm. and didn't have to be there. It's crazy. Like seventeen seventy six, the year that Washington did all all that insane shit. It's crazy that people kept they kept expecting the army to flee. Yeah. 
but they hung in there with with little it's not like they were like we're making america that's coming later yeah they had no fucking idea so he's he's as good as they were basically and yeah. it's not you know you picture him on this horse like talking but no most of them didn't even look at the guy they didn't see him you know like in the movies when they show a guy making a speech to a whole army and yes. there's three guys can hear yeah, him. it's impossible and the rest are like what is he, what's even happening <laughs> and they're all shitting on yeah, the it's like ground brave heart they're when all he's dying a speech. Of, the only yeah. people that can hear him are like shut up yes yeah, yeah. Two dudes are like, <laughs> yeah, yeah the english are too many the, the english are too <laughs> many <laughs> home yes we will and we will live yeah, yeah. we will live <laughs> that's a good all point right. i never thought about that yeah. No one heard their speeches. No one, no one heard any of their speeches. So it was really these guys all got together. I don't know. They, they got together. There. They decided to just keep doing it. Oh, I don't want to spend too much time on Washington. Yeah, Washington. I, I was never. That, I never really. I mean, the great thing he did was leaving when it was time to go. Yeah. It was like the thing because he. A lot of them wanted him to be king. Yeah. And a lot of them wanted him to be permanent. He's the one who said the thing where they wanted him to be Adams. Yeah. Wanted Adams. him to be. Your Majesty, or Your Excellency, yeah, they went by His Excellency, and he said, "Mr. President." No, no, what? Jefferson was the first Mr. President. Yeah, but Washington, Washington wanted Mr. President. Washington went with His Excellency because Adams had this long one, His Majesty, all this shit. What? Washington kept His Excellency. According to the HBO series about John Adams. Yeah, but I looked into it. Washington said, "I want Mr. President." Maybe he did. But he went by his excellency. He therefore the reason he did it was because he didn't want to shake people's hands. And back then that kind of Because he was like Howie Mandel? Yeah, he was like he'd rather just have people bow. I don't think he was a germaphobe as much as he just was like, This does command some respect. Because this is the first time in his life he started to get criticism. Really? Because when he was a general, everybody globally mm-hmm. outside of England was like, this guy's the fucking By the man. way, president, like to talk about that word for a second, yeah. what a president is, like just for just an overall president thought here. The why I love about presidents is there is that it's a human being. It's a person. Yeah. And to me, like it's like, uh, you know, like some college professors teach the Bible as literature. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they don't teach the Bible as a religious subject they mm-hmm. teach it as like what it, wh- what it's done for history and what the stories are about and you know that kind of thing i look at u.s presidents that way i don't have a political view about any of them i just yeah. think they're fucking fascinating and president the word by itself like your pr- president is nothing it's not you're not a leader you're not a uh ruler you don't rule yeah. you preside i mean that's literally what it means is that there's a whole group of people uh, that are running the government by the people's will, and you preside. You just yeah. happen to be there. It's like in the Senate, whenever they show people in the Senate speaking, they always say Mr. President over and over again, and they're speaking to whoever is presiding. It's never the vice president is literally the president of the yeah. Senate, but it's whoever takes the chair that day. Who's presiding? It's a, it's an incidental title given to an equal who is chosen for them for that minute to preside. That's what I like about it. That's why I like that's what I like about how they framed it. Yeah. You know? When did they set term limits? I didn't even look into that. Because he just left. Right. He was the first one to go, I could stay, I, but I'm uh, let's get like, this going. Done. Let's get this started. Yeah. There's some famous moment where he was speaking to the Congress and they were trying to get him to king himself. And he was apparently really vain about that he wore glasses, so no one ever saw him with glasses on. And so the moment that's supposed to be this shocking moment was that he took out his glasses and put them on, and he said, like, I fear I didn't see you for what you are. That was supposed to be this big moment. (laughs) (laughs) I like to think that if he did, like, he was really hoping if he missed, he's like, I fear I didn't see, and they're all like, what? Yeah, you wore glasses. We all, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, though. Yeah, like he keyed the whole thing on this moment. See what I'm saying? And they're like, George. Yeah, it's also a good moment for him to be like, yeah, you're right. You should not. How be do you king. turn down king status? To do funny though. jokes. What? How do you turn down like? That's what you makes should him be the king, g- and you're like, ah, that's what makes no. him the man, dude. That's wild, dude. That's what makes him. Well, also, like- he wasn't again. None of these people knew the future. He didn't know that he was giving away the keys to later nuclear war america yeah. true yeah he thought we were a dumb fucking like what 
Yeah, and these were yeah. all separate colonies. Like True, if yeah. if Louisiana became a separate nation, the first president of Louisiana might be like, "You guys, I'm, I'll do one term. <laughs> yeah, I'm <It's> good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to like hang in there." And... All right, so, Adams. Okay, Adams is like my favorite of those guys. Of I the like founding Adams fathers. For, I like Adams from the show. I loved him in that. He's a great Paul Giamatti. Well, as I read a, his biography. I listened to it. I don't read it. As anything. a president. Counts. Oh, he was eh. not a great president. Not at all. He It shows that everybody's got these different kind of strengths. He was a great framer. He was one of the guys. Yeah. He, he did many very important and gutsy things. And uh, he was also the only one of those guys who was not rich. He was a poor farmer. He was his education has made changed his life. He's like one of the first Americans who had that experience, you know, where he he was, you know, had a decent farm, but not much. But he made his brain work and he excelled and 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 passed that on to his son. He fucking talk about he fucking ruled in the revolution. Yeah. Adams was the man. Adams was the man. And because these other guys fucking um, uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin was just a giant perverted asshole i loved him oh he was great and all these guys (laughs) are great i'm not judging any of them but he wasn't he was of limited use because he was intrigued by america but he didn't give a shit yeah he never would have shed a fucking any blood or sweat or tears for the country he just was interested and he had a huge brain so he'd lend it when he felt like Mm -hmm. he was also full of shit you know like he was supposed to he was supposedly uh, invented electricity, but some other guy he saw a guy in his own autobiography. What Hold he on a saw, second. he never I just watched faked Ken anything. Burns on him. I'm pumped on him right now. Okay, so he saw a guy do the kite. What? And he was like, "That's cool." And he paid the guy for like the license to the to the gag, and he then he got one of his sons to do it, to go around doing it for money. It was just a thing that he. He picked up other people's ideas, which is its own, well, you know, thing. He also, all of his inventions, he would never patent, which really? is pretty sick. He was like, all my inventions are for everybody. Yeah, he was Type. for, what do, they, what do you call it, uh, uh, open source. Open source, But yeah. he did get a little jealous because all of a sudden, because he was the man. Yeah. He was the American that everybody loved. Be and, then he, and then Washington became the man. The general. Like, the the French were like, the gen, General Washington's the guy. So he got a little, he was a fame hungry. Did you ever read his yeah. autobiography? No, it's amazing because he has no judgment of himself. So he's the only like a lot of people that write autobiographies. It's kind of careful. But like he tells this story about he was living in London and there was a guy who worked for him, kind of like a half tradesman kind of guy who he befriended. And the guy had a woman he wanted to marry a maiden, but he didn't have a position and he didn't have his own home yet. So and his mother didn't want I don't remember all the logistics, but it was that that he asked Benjamin if he could move his wife into his house so that they could marry. And he said, sure. And he said, and she moved into my home. And then I um, I I took it of my pleasure to, you know, (laughs) to to partake of her sexually. (laughs) And she, um, you know, spurned my advances so i threw her out and <laughs> that was the, the end of their marriage and he's, i never saw him again he was real upset and i never saw him again but i know i but the both their lives were destroyed uh and then in may i met this other guy like yeah. he just talks he did awful things to people and didn't he give kinda, a shit yeah he was he there's some pretty sick quotes about slavery too that he was yeah. like i am racist like he was one right. of the first if not the only founding father to like constantly be like the I am bigoted. Right. None of them everyone else was like, this is the law. Everybody was like, Ben. Yeah, shut up. This is yeah. it's, e- it's e- economics. He's trying yeah. to fuck not, this it's not up. about He's race. Like, He's like, wrong. oh, it's totally about race. Yeah. yeah. yeah they were writing right. the constitution, like, look, our hands are tied. We have we can't Dude, do anything. They had to break it out. <laughs> so he was when he showed focus, he was <laughs> of use to like the revolution. And the same with Jefferson. Jefferson was like a depressive fucking freak. And so he would just like leave Washington. Yeah. He would just go like, ah, my wife is dead, whatever bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and he would get on his horse and just leave. Because also he was a man of great wealth and he had his his life 
in Monticello and in Virginia was we'll get to him. But the point is that Adams was just a doggedly hard working. He was oh, he was the only one who worked constantly. Yeah. And they, it was really the three of them in Madison. But he was the guy who did the hardest work to get this shit started. Damn. Yeah. He, he also, also apologized for cursing. Adams in one of his things. He's like, I lament to admit that I sometimes cursed, which I feel shameful about. <laughs> also, when Adams did his uh, <laughs> did the Constitution of Massachusetts, Mass the Mo Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is like the most liberal document in the world. Because Adams was like, he's like, I'm going to get it right. Everything that I couldn't get done in the American Constitution, I'm doing in this. And there's stuff in there about Jews having rights. There's even something about gay people in there. Like he was Whoa, into like wow. gay rights, Jews. It's pretty then. gay back then. It's pretty gay, pretty Jewish. It's gay to be a gay Jew. It's gay to be into Jews. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, to those, be into Jewish rights in the 1700s was gay. Those parliaments undeniably must have been gay. Undeniably crazy gay. Back then, like I don't know what about Jews. People are like get the fuck yeah. out of here. Yeah, like, Come on, about guys. Jews. Back Stop. then, have a room full of dude in powder wigs being like, boo. Yeah, cool. yeah. <laughs> like, and the Jews looked days. exactly that they look the same as they do now. Yeah. <laughs> the big black coats. Exact same outfits. <laughs> same outfits. Same leg. Oh. Hold on, I got what Adams did well, while he was in office. He was worried that his, his logic was another country could just come take this uh. at any moment. So he came up with the Alien and Sedition Act, which oh. meant if you talk shit on the government, we can jail you. So he started arresting journalists. He started well, he because he got he was the first liberal who got befuddled by guys. That, back then, it was another Democrat. It was uh, uh, Jefferson. Yeah, put going like whatever it takes to win. Yeah, it's always been like the different parts of American democracy, the different kinds of people, the people who are like, we got to get this right, we got to sell our good ideas and convince people we're right. But then the other guys who are like. We just got to take office. We sure. just need to win. And nerds lose that fight. Adams was yeah. the first one-term nerd president. There's a few of them. Yes, you're the, exactly right. B Bush the first is another one. He's to a one-term guy. He was from 97 to 01. Yep. Let's move to Jefferson. Jefferson. He's number three. That's 01 to 09. He was a two-term guy. Adams was a Federalist. Washington was obviously independent. Jefferson was a Democratic Republican. He was the first Mr. Pre president. Right when he got in, the French and the British started going to war. So everybody in America was like, fuck England. Also, France just helped us. Yeah. Fuck England. Let's join it. And he was he was oh, the he only loved one. the French. He loved the revolution in French. Yeah, he did. The, the Adams didn't because it was bloody and horrible. And he didn't like the French. He didn't and and uh and Jefferson loved the revolution and he loved he had all these his friends over there. He spent a lot of his life there. Yeah. But they started Americans started being like, Fuck England, let's join France in the war. He was the only one with the foresight to be like, We have 40 guys in our military and three boats. Yeah. Let's shut the fuck up. It's not. So he declared neutrality and everybody called him a pussy. Then England started blocking his like fucking ships. I think he didn't he, he might have been the one who said we're just not going to trade with either of them. So then our econ the American economy just plummeted. England started just saying if you're not trading with us, we're just going to confiscate your ships, steal, kidnap all the sailors, make them join the British Navy. What? So he was getting punked by England. You're talking about Jefferson. Jefferson. Well, it's interesting because Adams, what ended his presidency was a fake rumor that Jefferson started, that Adams was trying to start a war with mm. the, and start a Navy and do all this stuff. And mm. it was all fake. But then it ended up kind of haunting Jefferson because yeah. the, the truth of, about all that ended up r fucking him a lot. Huh. I, one thing interesting about Jefferson is because he's so famous for having had a slave and having having had like fifty thousand slaves, yeah, mm. or whatever that not that many, mm. um, and having had children with his slave, and I don't think he ever even gave he her didn't freedom. Free didn't free. He didn't free the kids. He didn't free a couple. He freed a couple. Freed two. Yeah, and the rest he kept enslaved until he died. And. What was interesting about them? Damn, he did is, the ultimate because I said so. Is so <laughs> <laughs> like that? Can I stop being a slave? He's like, no. Yeah. I said no. <laughs> they were like white. Really, his slave children. The woman he had, the woman that he Sally. had kids with, Sally, yeah. was like half white. 
or like was very light skinned. Yeah, I think her mother, because her mother was in his family for a long yes, time, and his dad was fucking that. Yes, I mean it was like what but she was kind of a product of his father. I'm not what? sure about that. I, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. sure about that. But it's <laughs> Some a, but an interesting dude. thing about him in terms of slavery <laughs> and, and American politics is that his first um, elected position was in the uh, Virginia legislature. He was like a, 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 a House a reps guy in Virginia. And the very first act he ever did, first thing he ever did as a as a politician was to propose a bill in the Virginia uh, government. Uh, to abolish slavery in the state of Virginia. Mm. It's the first thing he did. Whoa. Of course, it got shot down, but it was his it was his desire and his dream. Yeah, because he was big on that with the French Revolution. Yes. With and Lafayette the whole, and, yeah. Yes, and all of these guys, all of these early guys wanted slavery out, but yeah. the, there was no way the South was going to do it. Yeah. And they wanted the Southern, because um, so the choice was to have like just two countries or four countries over here mm -hmm. or have a unified country and just deal with it. Yeah. We're going to have slavery, but create a framework yeah. where in the future, when it becomes possible, when things change, when things get more modern, we can, we can get rid of it in the future. And I could be wrong, but I think the North had abolished slavery early, like 1806, which is while Jefferson's in office. I could be wrong. I don't know. It was anything. around the exact same time as England. In fact, maybe before oh, the, really? the fun, North. We were right. Us Northerners, we got it right. A fun Jefferson story that I like is that when he was in Paris, he had this woman, a, a girlfriend named Co something Causeway or something. His wife died when he was pretty young, mm. and she made him promise on her deathbed that he would never have another woman, which is a horrible thing to do. <laughs> yeah, fuck, To man. a young man that you're fucking, yeah, it's like, not yeah, even man. somebody to take, help, take care of the kids they had. It's like, no, I promise. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, but he's, a, he's oh for sure. So it was part of the reason that all of, including Sally Hemings, that his loves were all secret because he was ashamed of every woman that he loved after that. That's hot. And so there was a woman in in uh, uh, Paris. Was she was a British painter, and her husband. She was a woman. She was married, but she was a painter, and she fell in love with Thomas Jefferson, and they were very much in love with each other. But then the way they broke up was very funny to me because. <laughs> He was in, he wrote her these beautiful letters. She was in love with him. He was in love with her. But then um, the French, when he was leaving France, they wanted a great portrait of him to put in the National Gallery. And they said to him, you can choose any painter in the world. And he was like, no, I want, you know, a real guy. <laughs> 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 guy. His girlfriend was like, why not me? And he's like, baby, come on. I mean, like, you're good. You're, you're good, good, but you're not like you're not. fucking grown man. You're not like fucking, I'm not for history. True. These guys were his. That's the weirdest thing. How history mind? They were like knowing they were going to get they sucked knew, into dude. history, which is crazy to yeah. think about. So here's a good one because we got to speed up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he goes over. So Napoleon's in there mm -hmm. in France. Yeah. It's post revolution. This is the this is the Louisiana Purchase. They sent James Monroe over. That was his bro. Mm -hmm. He goes to France. They thought they were negotiating the sale of just the port of New Orleans. This is all thanks in part to the fucking Haitian Revolution, which fucked France. Look into the Haitian Revolution. Yeah. It rules. Uh, he gets over there. Monroe finds out, oh, they're trying to sell all of the Louisiana. Like, it's from it's from New Orleans to the Rockies, to yeah. Canada. It's what? huge. From the Appalachians to the Rockies, basically. And uh, they didn't have time to consult Congress. So Thomas Jefferson just bought it on the spot, yeah. which he was like, I abused the fuck out of my power. And he was, that was his whole thing is government should have no power. Yeah. He was against any. Federal... Well, that's what Jefferson's whole life was like doing fucked up things and then saying nobody should be able to like, <laughs> yeah. slavery. He's like, people that need to stop having slavery. He's fucking a slave. And it's like, somebody's yeah. got to stop this. We got to stop this. And yeah. Somebody's got to stop that. this. Somebody's got to stop fucking these. Slaves. Yeah. Well, the weekend wish it could be me. Got six kids. But I need to fuck this one right now. <laughs> yeah. Those arguments must have been crazy. Dude. All right. The, uh, but yeah, that was big because that secured the southern port. And, then we and, had, yeah. and Monroe was, was Secretary of State. Monroe, yeah. And then wasn't he the... Uh, um, no, 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 Madison. 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 Madison's Madison. next. Because usually the Secretary of State would end up being pres uh, president. Vice president at this point. Although, who was it? Was Jefferson Adams? Jefferson was Adams' vice president. Yeah. So that's three straight... Or two straight vice presidents. 
Then we got James Madison. He was a dork. Yes. He was a huge dork. He was a, the, a nerd. He was a frail, didn't... nervous, think Gerbys. What? He was yeah. Gerbys. Really? He, but this is sick. So basically he had the first, they said his lady was the first first lady, Dolly what? Madison, that was like really like, they would have parties at the White House. They would like try to get. And the, also he was Jefferson's mentor. He was another guy like Adams who was there all the time. Yeah. He was like a worker. He kept shit going, mm-hmm. and it's, it's, he would write Jefferson say in, in 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 France and go, "Can you fucking come home and be yeah. president?" <laughs> and Jefferson would write back and go, "I am just enjoying Paris, yeah. and I don't want to do it." <laughs> That's and then he would float in and just take the fucking big job. And yeah, Madison gets four years, and people are like, "Dude, you're boring." <laughs> no, America Mad- has no, Madison, never liked nerds. Madison. Gets two. Don't because. touch me. Don't touch me. Don't ever put your fucking hands on me. I can't touch me. your Don't shoes ever put your out of respect. Don't ever fucking hands on me. I'm going to grip you up. God damn it. Hold on. <laughs> so Jefferson, Jefferson was to shut the fuck up, guys. <laughs> shut up, guys. Sean, <laughs> get out. Sean, don't look at me. So Madison takes some of the flack because everybody was calling Jefferson a pussy for not fighting England. So he's like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it. What? So America just declares war on England. He nerd raged. He nerd raged on England. <laughs> no. England immediately marches down and burns Washington, <laughs> D.C. Burns it down. Yeah. They burnt the White House yep. immediately. He spaz but, cried. But every, yeah, he spaz cries. He's like, nobody's going to call me gay. But then I, everybody always acts like we lost 1812 just because they burned that shitty White House. Yeah. So First what? off, Washington, D.C. was a swamp. It was literally a swamp. It was a shithole. No one lived there. Uh, War of 1812, we fucked England up. Fort McHenry, the Star Spangled Banner, all that shit. Battle of oh. New Orleans, we smashed them. Battle dude. of New Orleans was, uh, what's his name? Jackson. Fucking Jackson. Yeah. And Jackson, they were fighting the Battle of New Orleans. The war had been already over for a while. Oh, really? Yeah, the yeah. war was already settled. Oh, yeah, they fought the it in 1815. Was, was it was in January of And uh, he was still fighting. Yeah. Well, you get to Jackson, he's fucking he's incredible. Wild. Incredible. Right. So, first Trump, he was the first Trump. Yep. First, so all of a sudden, America, that's our first war as a country. Yeah. So now America well, also, is not before just that, Because England was just taking pot shots. England would just park a ship uh, outside of like, a, you know, a, a Baltimore or whatever. They're and so just start good. heaving fucking fireballs <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> like, dickheads. you know, yeah. where, do you know Hudson, New York? It's a town yeah. in, uh, in the Hudson. It has a weird maritime feeling to it. It looks like Nantucket. And that's because it's all people from Nantucket. It used to be this little whaling village in Nantucket. And in the 1810s, the British would just park a ship and just set houses on fire <laughs> for fucking fun. What? So all the people that lived in that town found a they founded Hudson. And they would go out and whale in the ocean. And then they'd drag a whale up the Hudson River. Holy shit. And they would slaughter it and then send it down the river. It was a great way to send whale meat and oil down to here, New, New York, York City, yeah. and that established a hub in New York, uh, an upper New York State. Hudson became a very big, important, and oh. that's where you ever heard of a guy named Legs Diamond because Diamond yeah. Diamond Street was like the first whore street. It sounded like Hudson became a place for farmers mm-hmm. to bring their herds and get laid and get you know just fuck and Whoa. gamble Damn. and and have their animals slaughtered and brought down here on boats, and then they so go they home got paid. Damn. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so, so we'll that's skip. what was going on. That's how much things like oh. just the English, uh, one English ship lobbing fireballs changes a ton oh, of things. Yeah. Yeah, some and they finally they needed sucks. it to stop. <laughs> yeah. Resulting yeah. in some guy getting ahead. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm never going to be able to face me wife. <laughs> me wife. So. Okay. So, yeah. So now you got. Now we're kind of so unified. That was the first time. Madison. The Madison, War of 1812. It was a draw. I mean, they signed a treaty after two years. Nothing and changed, though. Just nothing the, changed. The English stopped harassing us. Yeah, though, I but do we think declared war. They came over. Yeah. We kind of fucked them up, though. I looked at the casualty numbers. It was like double. That doesn't really? matter in the historical story. Of course, of course. Of course. But I always, everybody die. always acts like... Because they got over here and they all died of disease kind of immediately. Like, yeah. They got fucked up. It was hard to... And they were like, this, we, we can't afford to fight this while we're fighting the French truce. Uh, that brings us to Monroe. Monroe was kind of the man. Monroe was the last founding father to be a president, fought in the Revolutionary War, was at Valley Forge. He came up with the Monroe Doctrine, which is neutrality. Mm-hmm. We got the Americas. Nobody fuck with us. 
because they were all worried Europe was going to Spain or Europe was going to come back and take. Well, South that was America. all the source of all our problems was these other fucking European countries yeah. being involved in their wars. So he was the first guy to go. Yeah, we're never going to go get want. involved in their wars. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's kind of what they were saying was that's like the most lasting policies of any of the founding fathers was like American neutrality. Europe, you can have your wars. We're staying the fuck out. Yeah. Obviously, it lasted a hundred years. Um, added Florida. Monroe got Florida from the Spanish. Nice. So the reason that happened, though, was because of Jackson, because Jackson was taking his troops to Florida and Monroe was sending a guy on a you know, horse. or I don't know if they had telegrams <laughs> yeah. yet, but it was take him eight days to say, leave Florida alone. We're trying to negotiate yeah. a, um, a price. But finally, Monroe decided we don't want Florida anymore. They're asking this. The Span Spanish owned it. They, we can't afford to buy it. I can't justify it. I'm not going to get it through Congress. And Jackson was writing back and saying, I'm just going to take it. <laughs> I'm just going to take it militarily. I'm going to attack them. And Monroe said, no, you may not. I'm the president. You may not <laughs> yeah. do that. And Jackson just ignored him. Yeah, and started attacking and him. he did it. What? He took Florida. And then he showed up in D.C. and was like, right, that was good, right? And Monroe's like, yes, thank you very much. Yeah, he's like, but also I bought it. Good job. Yeah, also I think he we paid, paid for it. We paid for it, and it was a while, mess. While Jackson what? was while Jackson was like <laughs> fucking with them, the Spanish were like, to Monroe, they're like, yeah, you can buy it. And he just went and killed him. <laughs> <laughs> he was down fighting them, and he was like, yeah, actually, you know what? Yeah, we're gonna but sell it. There's two generals that did that. Him and MacArthur did that too. Just did shit without permission. Yeah, and then showed up and said, "Right, Mr. President, wasn't that the plan that was all along?" Good. And he was like, "Yes, it was the plan all along. Whatever you want, <laughs> whatever you want." So you got that. But this is interesting because Monroe was the first part that uh, this is where the slavery issue starts to take mm -hmm. real issue because it was the Missouri Compromise. So Missouri was becoming a state; it was another slave state, pro-slavery. Yeah. So every so just he, so every time they added a slave state, they'd have to add, they a, had free to add slave. a free slave, free oh, one to really? make sure it was balanced. Yeah. So that's when we added Maine. Missouri got to be a slave state. That's it for him. Hmm. John Quincy Adams. Yeah, so John Quincy Adams was Secretary of State. John Quincy Adams had a big role in the in the um in Florida. Yeah. And he had a big role in that compromise. That was a big part. Of, he was a statesman. John Quincy Adams fucking fascinating guy. I yeah. read his biography. The thing about him and his father is that they wrote copious, really long diary entries. So we know a lot about those guys. But um, he was he traveled with his father to England. He's a, he was like the last link to the Great yeah. Revolution. Yeah. Because he was with his father wherever he went and he took him to uh, France. He ended up being a diplomat. He was the first um, American uh, ambassador to Russia. He lived in St. Petersburg, Russia. And him and his. Oh wait, was he the one who helped them, kind of revolutionize? I don't. Or was that before? Remember that? that okay. I mean, but he was in Russia way, way back then. He'd take like a sleigh to, to you know, countries that aren't there anymore, like Prussia, and uh, he was he traveled all over. He traveled more than any like human being back then. Yeah. And he went across the ocean several times, so like something like twelve times back and Jesus. forth. Now An his amazing guy, his incredible uh, guy, his opponent. Was Jackson in this election? Yeah, Jackson dominated. Won he won the popular vote by a greater margin than Reagan beat Carter. It was a landslide victory for him. But Jackson, in the Battle of New Orleans, came out and said all the guys from Kentucky were being fucking cowards. What? So then, when it comes to the Electoral College, the guy counting the votes happened to be like a senator or something from Kentucky. What? And I was like, fuck this guy. <laughs> and he just swung like 10 states. Because back then, back then, the Electoral College made perfect sense. Nobody in any state had ever heard of one of these guys. Mm -hmm. There was no news. There was no fucking anything. Now, you needed somebody. Yeah, you needed super delegates. You needed to, to sort of a, just get things. your local guy yeah. and be like, you, you go, go. You go figure it out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But that was enough for this guy to swing all these dudes in the meetings to be like, Dude, Fuck. Jackson's a fucking dickhead. We need John Quincy Adams. So he swung. I mean, it was, it was John Quincy moved. Adams Cowardly was another moved. nerd, one-term nerd. Yes, who just couldn't get. I mean, as a president, he couldn't get, and he got almost nothing done. Partly because Jackson and his people yeah. just thwarted every single thing Jackson he tried. Had, the whole country loved Jackson. Everybody fucking <laughs> loved that dude. What? He was Trump. so much. He was Trump. He was. <laughs> imagine if Trump like dueled. 
as yeah. much as Jesus Christ. Jackson died yeah, Jackson with dudes. something like 12 <laughs> bullets in his body. Yeah. What? That never left his body. He dueled all the time. Yeah, let's just go straight to Jack. Jackson, he's the next Wait, president. Wait, jo- just he, he can't not be mentioned John Quincy. JQ. Yeah, fuck John Quincy. John go Quincy ahead. Adams, well after his presidency, he was in Congress forever from Massachusetts. Yeah. He died at his seat. What? In Congress. Wow. He died in at his desk. He was made because his thing, he was a huge abolitionist. He was like the only guy in the Congress willing to be an out and out. The slave states had so much power that they passed a law, a gag law that said you can't say the word slavery in Congress. Well, they yeah. used to be uh, there was a thing in Congress back then <laughs> called petitioning. Anyone could send a petition to their congressperson and they had to say it. They had to mention it. So like you could send a thing to Congress saying, um, I want all, you know, I want retards to be allowed to drive, whatever you would do. (laughs) I want retarded people to have driver's license. Yes. And he would say he'd have to go, okay, the petition from Shane Gillis. He wants retards to drive. The honorable. And everyone would go. I moved to table it and then they just table it. <laughs> but they passed a law saying you couldn't even you couldn't even mention a petition that said the word slavery because that's how electrified that it was like we don't want anybody we know you're trying to get rid of slavery we don't even want you to say and they passed it. So John, uh, uh Quincy Adams would do it and he would just break the law and he would just say it over and over again he would read petitions about slavery and he would get sent then they would all vote the whole congress to censure him for going against the rules. And he got censured over and over yeah. again. And he he uh, represented the Amistad slaves and got them Holy set shit. free. Yeah, did what? you know that? No. Yeah, he was the, the slave ship that was taken over by slaves mm-hmm. and was grounded in Massachusetts, I think. Um, so you were saying the S word. He got in trouble. Yeah. He got not only in trouble, <laughs> they came... Those slaves asked him to represent that he was their lawyer what? because they were all they were Virginia slave masters who were waiting for their Haitian slaves that they were waiting for that they had paid for. But he found a way just with it wasn't like a slavery is wrong trial. It was you yeah. guys don't have a receipt trial. It was like you ain't got the paperwork. Go fuck yourselves. So they were nice, so they were dude. free. But oh. he, but yeah, he died. He was in the middle of a big impassioned argument. He was yelling and he had a heart attack. And he died right there with the, the whole Congress around him, Just watching because him. they loved and people loved that guy. Yeah, Whoa. he was a great guy. He was the first president or former president to ride on a steamship, and he used to ride on the steamships with a blanket over him, and folks would surround him. All the passengers would surround him, and just he would just tell stories. And he was a great guy. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Man, I didn't know. I didn't know any of <laughs> There's that. just a part of me that liked. Jackson. Jackson's great, but I mean, dickhead. I mean, and again, to me, I'm I re- I, I look at all these guys. I evaluate them as characters. They're all mm-hmm. great, amazing yeah. characters. They all did awful things, of course. Yeah, but uh, I mean, Obama fucking bombed, you know, fucking weddings. Obama, <laughs> Obama. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but but uh, yes, Jackson was a crazy, but shrewd. A great yeah. thing about Jackson was that his part, his inaugural party. In the White House, yeah, uh, this is wild. They 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 stormed he, the Capitol. He invited everybody. <laughs> That's exactly right. They he invited them. everyone. He said, "Anyone that wants can come. Uh, no no invitation needed. It's the people's house, and the My the house God. was crammed with common people getting drunk, stealing shit, shit face, destroyed, and the they wouldn't place. leave. And there's a there's a honor code in the White House. You don't ask someone to leave. You don't ever throw anybody out. So they couldn't get them. Like days went by <laughs> where people are shitting on the floor <laughs> and raiding the fucking Dude. pantry and just fucking people and whatever. What? And so what they did was they got huge kegs of beer and they put them on the lawn and they nice. said, "Hey, come out. Let's let's drink under the stars. Let's have you know." And they invited them out for beer on the lawn, and they all came outside and they locked locked the doors. <laughs> that was how he he was a he was a people's president. Yeah, like he was there the was first populist in his um, first yes, guy. Yeah, first one to appeal to the common person. Yeah. There was an author of English guy. I read his bi- uh, biography of him, and they have one account of an uh, English. A uh, traveling writer who would write travel logs, and uh, he was in Washington, and he thought, "What is it like? Can you meet the president?" And he just walked. There wasn't a fence around. Yeah, the house people then. just could walk in. And so see he him. just walked to the front door and he knocked on the door, and the, a butler came and 
to the door and said hello and he said i'd like to meet the president and he's like is he expecting you he goes no and the butler's like well, all right we'll come in and sit down <laughs> and he went in the guy waited like 20 minutes and jackson came out of his office which was like full of people and he said i'm in a pretty important like who are you yeah and he said i just wanted to meet you and say hi and he was like all right can you wait an hour <laughs> and he's like sure so he went and whatever fucking signed a yeah. thing to kill all the indians <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then he came and had uh sandwiches brought and he sat with the guy and just talked to him for an hour damn damn he also went he was the first president i think to ride on a on a real like on a train he took a train he was the first one to do this that he went all over the country yeah he went came up to he went up to maine presidents never travel he was the first guy to do that like he thought people should see the president people should have contact Whoa. With the president. The Trail of Tears, he he flubbed that one. Yeah. Was flubbed. Fun. He, he nailed a bit of a fl- <laughs> <laughs> He did do exactly what his goal he did was. what he tried to yeah. do. He fucking flubbed. That was a bit of a flub. He, no, he was not. He didn't make mistakes. I, I looked it up. I don't know if you... They had slaves. It's, yeah, yeah. The fucking dudes on the Trail of Tears, they were like, we got to bring our slaves. If slaves are available... Folks get slaves. That's yeah. just the way that goes. I couldn't believe it. But when when he was peaceful, yeah, yeah, that's point. what the part you don't hear is like the Indians are like, you know what he did to us, and what he did to our slaves was yeah, even worse. our slaves had it real bad on yeah. the trail of tears. I mean, tell me about it. Yeah, but didn't they like share everything with their slaves though? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they were yeah, way yeah. better. It was slaves. Like real peaceful. It was egalitarian, dude. <clears throat> there were some no, of those he, good slave owners. He uh, the natives. There is some story from the uh, some chief, big chief, went to uh, the White House to meet with the Jackson because Jackson was very honest. Yeah. He didn't underhand ever. He didn't play politics. He did horrible things, but he just went ahead and did them. Like there was a slave revolt during his presidency where they took over a fort. The slaves took over a fort and just said, we just want out. We just want to be taken to the north or Canada or whatever. And so he just got a bunch of cannons and just he just lit the whole place and killed them. Bombed him. Jesus. He didn't fucking care. So some famous like a name you'd recognize it wasn't like sitting bull but it was some big uh all of the indians the tribes all the tribes chose this guy yeah to negotiate with uh jackson and he went and talked to jackson just the two of them and he came out crying and said <laughs> what we're He's not like, we're in trouble yeah he <laughs> says we're not he this is gonna go bad Oh, it's gonna go bad. No. no, he was. He just had his way of thinking about how it was gonna yeah. go. He's like, no, we got to clear these guys out of here. Also, in line with Trump, he was like, this is where the term mudslinging starts. Yeah, it was him and John Quincy. Their election or their debates and shit was. He would just talk. They would talk shit. There would be nasty rumors oh, in the papers. Whatever it took. Yeah. Whatever it took. No, yeah. I remember. I have a friend who's a Trump guy who I've known for a long time. I'm not going to say that his name is Nick DiPaolo. <laughs> but, uh, knowing Nick has always given me some insight into the into the mentality of that kind of guy, not just yeah. Trump, but guys like Jackson. I remember once I was with Nick and a lot of people, and he was, um, and like three uh, Democrats were yelling at him. And he was starting to say crazy, fucked up things to them. And at one point, I'm like, Nick, you even you know that's wrong. And he yeah. goes... It's three against one. Like, <laughs> like, what do you want me to do? Like, he's in a, yeah. and I, and it gave me that I, cause, and then brought me back to when I was like 19 and I was uh, friends with Nick and we were comedians in Boston. And there was a, uh, a pinball machine we really liked playing at this one club. So we're playing pinball against each other. And when it was my turn, I was starting to beat his score. And he just put his hand over my hand <laughs> so I couldn't flip. And he just looked at me like this. And I'm like, really? And he goes, yeah, I win. <laughs> I win. I don't care. Fuck. But he Jackson, was big, too. Wasn't Jackson was, yes. Yeah, Jackson was strong. the first. Yeah, he was a football player. Yeah. A college football player. Jackson was the first president to go like, uh, fuck you! I'm I'm winning! I'm yeah. winning this! I don't care what happens to you. Jesus. We're, we're gonna we're gonna you know. So um, he also one of the big things with Jackson. He was the, he vetoed more bills than every president before him combined. Nice. He hated the banks. He he like went to war. It's crazy that he's on the twenty. Yeah. It's like a joke because he hated the idea of a central bank. He hated the idea of a treasury. He thought that it should just be folks have their yeah. money, use gold, and you trade. And he wanted. So I think know, the U.S. bank. At the time, I think it was called the United States, like the Bank of the United States was up for re to be renewed. Mm-hmm. 
and he just happened to be the president and he vetoed it. Yeah, and it was a thing you don't veto. You can't like, veto it. No. But he he vetoed it. So then the next guy, we'll get to him, is his vice president, Van Buren. He takes over. Mm -hmm. He takes over a completely destroyed economy because he vetoed the bank. That's the that's the way it goes. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. cool guys. Yeah. America is made of cowboys and nerds. So yeah. you got cowboys who show off and who show what kind of people we are. And then you have nerds who actually get things done. But the cowboys get the credits. Yeah. Then nerds get fucked every he time. He got fucked. His nickname was Van Ruin. <laughs> yes. He had a lot of nicknames. <laughs> they were like, Old this. Kinderhook. He yeah. was another total nerd, and everybody hated Van Buren. He was like a little fucking... Yeah. He was supposed mm. to be, I think, he was one of those vice presidents that was supposed to be a link. Like, because Jackson was the man in the South, kind of, or wherever, and they were like, let's get this dork to... He was know. from uh, he was Kinderhook, Pence. New York. He was his Pence. Yeah, yeah. He was oh, Trump's yeah. Pence. Yeah, he no. was, uh, the, the the legend is that, you know, he was one of the first people to have uh, um, pamphlets, like a lot of pamphlets, like the, the press, like the mass press started to get big. So his pamphlet was because he was called Old Kinderhook because he's from Kinderhook, New York. So his thing was OK. And it was oh, a check mark. Oh, nice. And that's where people say that OK comes from. What? Yeah. Because it was like his thing was OK with a check mark. That was the point. It was like vote for old Kinnerhook. That's the thing. That's the thing. When you look into this, that's where all of our shit comes from. Yeah, that's nuts. It's all of this. All right. Well, you got to speed up because this one's funny. Van Buren sucked, whatever. Yeah, yeah he's his. Here comes Harrison. He's the next guy. Everybody called him old granny because he was too much of a geezer to run. So on his inauguration, he was like. I'm going to prove to everyone how tough I am. Yeah. It was freezing cold and raining. He had like an 8,000 word inauguration. Yeah. <laughs> he got a pneumonia and died. <laughs> he died. He was uh, <laughs> like a few months. He died immediately. Like Shortest yeah. term. Died. Damn. Shortest term. Never had a, didn't have a minute of acting as president. Trying to prove he was tough. Got sick the first day. Awesome. <laughs> died immediately. And awesome. died a few months later. What? So, yep. Uh, G. That brings us to Tyler. He did nothing. <laughs> Tyler was uh, his general, party abandoned right? him. No, oh, no. Of Taylor. He was Harrison's vice president. So oh, Harrison dies. Him. The one thing he did do is set the precedent that the vice president stays as president. Nice. So everyone was like, "What? Well, we don't know what to do here. The president's never died. Do you take over as an interim guy mm. until we find a new guy? And he was like, no, I'm just the president. I'm the president. And enough that his party hated him for that. So they were they his own party abandoned him. They didn't Why? put him up for re election. Well, because they thought they should they wanted to choose put, another guy. They wanted to be able to put a stronger another guy. guy. Yeah. So he stayed. He had n no parties supported him. He got nothing done. He was never up for re election again. It must have been awkward. That brings us to our guy though. This is who I wanted to get to. What? Polk, dude. Turns out Polk's the man. Really? Yeah. Dude. I know nothing about Polk. No. He was one term because he was a dark horse out of nowhere and he promised everybody in his party, I'll only do one term. That way, some of you guys that are good, that are getting ready, you can take over. I yeah. promise to do one term. When he was running, his opponent's slogan was, who is James K. Polk? Like, people were talking shit. As soon as he got in, oh, this is good. He was a tiny guy. He was 5'8", mm, which was like... That's really small. Yeah, he was 5'8", and when he got in, his wife was the one who came up with, they got to play hail to the chief every time you come in a room to give you some respect. Give him a little, yeah. Yeah, so that's why that happens. Nice. Um, <laughs> so right away, Polk starts going. But wild. it was kind of a joke. It's like if a midget walked in. No, Polk's a beast. Immediately, he starts fucking with the British about Oregon. So they have the Oregon territory. Yeah. Out there, which is just beaver hunting. Everybody's mm. you know beaver hunting. <laughs> We're doing a little bit of what that in Nash Vegas. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, he means trying to get pussy. about pussies. Hunting in Oregon for. They were they were in Oregon, <laughs> pussy Oregon hunting. pussy hunting. So the British were pussy hunting. <laughs> the British and Americans were both pussy hunting on the same territory. And Polk was like, "Nah, we're done with that." And he said, "Alleged the the latitude and longitude was fifty four and forty. So he came out with the slogan fifty four and forty or fight." He was saying that to the British. He was like, "We're gonna fuck catchy. you guys up." True. So he came out with that, and the British people were really in into they loved latitudes slogans. and longitudes. They back were then. So he called that. And the British were afraid to call his bluff. They were just like, fine, take They're it. Like, that slogan is so good. Yeah, like, just <laughs> take it. Fuck, dude, this guy's too nuts. Dude, you came up with the fucking, you used the longitude and latitude? So he takes that territory, which is huge. And then it's not just Oregon, it's Washington, all that. You know how why Oregon is, uh, Portland is called Portland? Mm. I bet you I do. It was kind of, do you? No, it's not. 
It was going to be Boston. What? Because these two guys, is it Lewis and Clark? That yeah. yeah, yeah. So one of them is that from... That was Jefferson. Just one of them is from that. Boston, and one of them is from Portland, Maine. And they both wanted to name it after their hometown. Oh. And they flipped a coin huh. and named it Portland. And there is a Boston in Oregon. Mm. There's a town called Boston, Oregon. Anyway, hmm. go on. So after he gets Oregon, yeah. he's, st- he's like, all right, it's time for me to get Texas. Mm-hmm. He starts fucking with the Mexicans. Like say they would send troops down mm-hmm. just to see if the Mexicans would shoot first. Mm-hmm. Finally, they did. He fucking immediately lazy Mexicans. They, finally, they <laughs> shot so a bunch many of times. <laughs> he to he get Im- off their fucking frijoles <laughs> and fire a shot. <laughs> so they they go to war. Here they come like, yeah, I don't want to fire. <laughs> he fired the last one. One of them was like. <laughs> 70,000 troops poured in. Oh, no. So th- we immediately took California, Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, Texas. And this then is who, is the general, four years. who is the general that penetrated all the way to Mexico City? That, this is later, right? Uh, this was the next guy who was uh, Zachary Taylor. Yeah, yeah Zachary, Zachary Taylor was Zachary the big uh, Mexican-American war Yeah, guy. he was the warrior. What? Zachary Taylor was dominating. So but gathered- this is- he went into Mexico City, and, the, and if you go to in Mexico City... The big thing is Los Niños, these six, I think it's four, six kids. So they stormed, they went all the way to Mexico City, and the Citadel, the the um, Chapultepec, the palace, uh, the army was so decimated that it was finally just the cadets of the military school were the only ones Yikes. defending the capital. And they were, fi- they were just four kids firing on the American army is just coming. Fuck. And they finally they wrapped themselves in Mexican flags and jumped and dove and killed themselves. That was how they ended That's the war. Awesome. And the moment is Zachary Taylor is holding one of them and he's saying they were just kids. Uh, like he had no idea they were ch- they were like fucking 12, 15 years oh, old. Man. And in Me- in Chapultepec, there's four big pillars uh, that are still they're like hey, war heroes. Are. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. What did Mexico have back then? Like, a, was it like a king or like? A lot of, they. Oh well, they had Max. So uh, the what was going on all these years? Um, Napoleon assumed that the South would win the Civil War eventually. That the South that there would be a, they the Europe always bet bet on the South because mm. the South was was a uh, aristocratic. Mm. America. It was about plantations and old families, and that's a European. They and they loved Europe in the South. Yeah. The North was always against Europe and wanting to start something new. So during the Civil War, so Maximilian was just a Habsburg. But the way kings worked back then, there were some royalty factories. So the Habsburg family, who I think were like Flemish or whatever the yeah. fuck. They just were, had like somebody, a cousin of a king. They went, Maximilian and his wife, they're like, you guys take Mexico. You're, you're, so so yeah. Napoleon sent French troops to Mexico and in, installed Max, uh, Maximilian. But then the- Which is what Cinco de Mayo is. Yes. Oh. And then, so then the, the, the Mexicans finally uh, overran, because when we lost the Civil War, when, the, when we lost the Civil War, <laughs> 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 maybe- I don't know what made me say that. No, when the <laughs> when the South lost the Civil War, Napoleon was like, "All right, fuck this." Well, and wait, Napoleon just, was gone for this, or Civil whoever the French yes. pulled their yes. pulled their. Uh, well, there was like three Napoleons. Oh, oh true. Right. I think it was uh, a later Napoleon. Wow. Yes, pulled uh, support. Yeah, and Maximilian, um, uh, they beheaded him. Fuck. They fed peyote to his wife what? and sent her home. And there's some little village somewhere in like uh, the Netherlands where they tell you like she's going to come get you because she would run in the streets. She went insane. She would what? run the streets screaming. Fuck. And they tell kids if you don't get to sleep because she comes out at night. If you don't go to sleep, she's going to oh she's gonna come get God. you. So yeah, that's, how far, that's how far in Mexico. Dude, they, I'm sorry to derail you. No, but so, no, that's so Zachary, so you were still at Polk no, and then Taylor. Polk, but still, so one thing that was cool was when Polk was instigating this war with Mexico. You got to uh, cut that part where I say we lost. Yeah. No, you that's good. Cut that. I don't that's know good. what you made me say it. that. You corrected it immediately. <laughs> this is pretty sick. So Polk was up there like they're fucking with us. They they shot at our troops. A nice old an old uh, one term senator from Illinois at the time stood up and said, "Were we on their territory when we shot them?" 
There was one guy that was opposed to the Mexican American War. A guy by the name of Abraham Lincoln. Really? And, Abraham Lincoln. And people yes. were like, "Hey, shut up, pussy." <laughs> yeah, dude. We're trying to take Texas. Shut yeah. the fuck he's up. He's like, oh, "You guys, were we?" I'm like, "Yeah." He was like, "Sorry." <laughs> like, I think this was wrong. Like, anyway, that's why Polk's kind of the man. He he added one third of the entire United States in a four year term. Damn, pretty good. Well, in territory. I know, but still, still, it's like those big. Yeah, but he got Texas and California, and they were pretty just sitting probably on the, half our population. Pretty good. Show. And they're sitting. I on the wish border. he hadn't added them. <laughs> Especially Texas. The but again, then we went. Like, Mexico have, sucks. Yeah. Mexico fucking yeah. sucks. Finally, one, got, <laughs> yeah, go, go, go. Oh shit, run, run, run. They're pissed. Yo, Mexico's gay. <laughs> uh, again, that was a smashing. We America destroyed Mexico. Yeah. It was mean. It was mean. Yeah, it was nice. Um then this is good. Polk, he was working his tail off. His tail. Huh? He was tired. He got he was he was so exhausted when he got done. He went back to Tennessee and just died, like right away, right? Yeah, he, died, yeah. <laughs> he was like, "That was too much. I should have done a lot all that. of work." <laughs> yep, <laughs> just died. So then comes Zachary Taylor. This is eighteen forty nine to eighteen fifty. That's a quick term. Uh, old rough and ready. Yeah, pretty sick nickname. Old dead and yeah, he's old. He's about to be dead. <laughs> yeah, he died. I don't remember what he died of. He was a uh, just being in the eighteen hundreds. Yeah. yeah. He was one of the largest slaveholders in the South. So when he got elected, the South was like nice because at this point, the, the territories, he just added. Polk did all that in four years, which was sick, but it also, it was too much because mm. now there's so much territory and the slaves versus the abolitionist debate. Every state they had to add, there was a debate. Uh, there was a debatey. Um, all Southern presidents, so many Southern presidents. Yeah. I mean, outside of the Adamses. Pretty much nonstop Virginia. Yep. And then it gets into like Tennessee and they yeah. started digging into their their bench was not. Yeah, they got to Tennessee, dude. And then we started kind of with Ohio, we started coming back. Yeah. Huh. Um actually kind of northern presidents tended to suck. Lincoln ruled. Yeah. But he was well, he was Kentucky, uh, Illinois. Yeah. Uh, Illinois before we'll Kentucky. Which I always forget is. one. I think he I think he was born in Kentucky in a log cabin in Kentucky. And then he was the Illinois. Then he Illinois. moved to Illinois. Yeah. Who fucking knows? There's yeah. no way to know. We weren't right about There's half we'll these. Ever know we were never we... correct about half these facts, but we're having fun. Oh, yeah. I I could be. I'm just. I love yeah, just acting like I know. It's great. <laughs> uh, so one thing, Taylor gets in there. Everybody's like nice. Everybody in the South's like nice. This guy's pro-slavery. He gets in. He tends to start actually leaning towards uh, standing with the North. This is all leading to the Civil War because, like, guys like this start fucking this up. As soon as he says we're going to establish or abolish slave in the Western territories, uh, South Carolina says they're going to succeed. Taylor says he's going to fucking hang everybody down there if they do it. What? <laughs> yeah, he didn't react well. To this yeah, stuff. no, he wasn't like let's talk and send it. Yeah, over he was like, gonna fucking he would just say you. that, and then yeah. they're like, "Are you?" And he's like, "Well, no, but I'm gonna hang a lot." <laughs> <of you. laughs> the problem with tough talk. <laughs> Yeah. This is this is how he died. What he did? So what he went. This is his Probably first doing a term. Podcast about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. How did he die? He went to Washington D.C. for Independence Day, and he ate a, too many cherries and milk. What? Because, <laughs> like I said, it was a swamp, so there was like a cholera outbreak. That was outbreak. like the old uh, Pop oh. Rocks and Coke. Yeah, he had cherries and frosted <laughs> milk, and, he, and that was he it? exploded. <laughs> um, Damn, it must have been delicious. By the way, you know how many pr- uh, there were. Uh, Four presidents were. When you think about the fact that four of them were assassinated. Yeah, uh, four. Well, successfully. Yeah, so I hear you. four were killed, shot, yeah. shot and killed. Yeah, four Wait. out of forty. There's been forty-seven presidents. Ten percent. Wait, yeah. hold on. How many got shot and killed? It was. I don't think they got shot and killed. Yeah, four were shot and killed. Uh, Gar- is it Garfield? See, no. this is where I, I stopped. A I guy with you. a G. Gro- it's either Grover Cleveland or Garfield. One of those two was yeah, shot can, and killed. Yeah. Uh, McKinley shot and killed. JFK and Lincoln. Nice. Four shot and killed. Reagan fucking close. Badly shot. Yeah. Uh 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 Roosevelt, Teddy, shot in the chest. Bull. Uh but had a a, a, spe- a thick piece of paper with his Fuck, speech and a glasses so cool, case. Man. Finished the speech, dude. Whew. Yep, finished the speech. Got shot and was like uh <laughs> and somebody <laughs> shot at at, at um uh, Jack Andrew Jackson. Yeah. And, and he uh, had a cane, and he beat the guy, beat the <laughs> shit out of the guy. I almost beat him to death. The guy shot, shot him, and he just get the fuck. It was right outside the the Capitol. What? Like by the big uh, 
pillars or whatever. Yeah. And he just beat the fucking <laughs> shit out the of him. Shot. He was in- insane. Old uh, Hickory. Were they yes. all crazed lone gunmen type things, or was it like? Yeah, most of them were crazy people. There's a few other guys that were shot at that, yeah, that somebody sure. took shots at them, and uh, but that they didn't get hurt. Oh, what's his name? Uh, well, FDR. They killed the governor right who was sitting next to him. Somebody a spray of bullets, and he what? wasn't hurt, but the governor sitting next to him was killed. Jesus, governor of Georgia or Florida? I don't fucking know. Anyway, go on. But yeah, like <laughs> over ten percent, like twelve percent of them had been shot. Have been shot. Yeah. At. So crazy. it's an intense job. <laughs> it's a There's a good chance. It is like a higher rate than actual soldiers in war. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. It's probably. I guess so. I bet yeah. it is. It might That's be fucked up. Yeah, because in like regular like revolution shit, it's like seventy thousand soldiers, two thousand dead. What's crazy shit is like that. But before it used to be like when you know you like uh, uh, what's his name Alexander the Great and whoever some kings used to lead heads of state yeah. used to lead charges. <laughs> they yeah. used to be the front horse, <laughs> yeah. like going right headlong into an army. That'd be nice to be a yeah, guy. A lot of Roman a spear, uh, like, Roman guys did that. And jackpot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I fucking got him. It's, holy shit! Got he's coming right at me. He's coming right. Oh, at me. oh, oh fuck! Some, I blew I'm it. Just Guy. Fuck, I missed. missed. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now we're at Fillmore. Uh, the thing that sucks about uh, fucking Taylor dying is he was like kind of a beast that could have maybe prevented the Civil War that yeah. was looming. And Fillmore, Fillmore was a, just a schlub. Fillmore was a schlub. He signed. This is where it all starts to fuck up. Every single one of these guys up to Lincoln is just fucking up immensely. He He's wanted to sign. The buck and passing the buck. So Taylor was offered to sign the Compromise of 1850, which was uh, some shit about one slave state, one regular, or they get to decide, shit like that. Mm. As soon as fucking Taylor died, Fillmore takes over and signs it. Uh, Southerners were mad that California would join as a free state. Northerners were mad about the fugitive slave law. So they both compromised and were both pissed. Fugitive slave law was if you ca- if you find a slave in the North. There's U.S. Marshals that'll catch them and bring them back to the South. You have to help um, them get them back. And oh, really? there were dudes that were just like grabbing black people. Yeah, be like, got them. Uh, yeah, Where's yeah. my bounty? So That's it was, how the it was bad. Years a slave guy got taken. Oh shit! Is it? Yeah, he wasn't. A, he was a free Northerner who just, just got grabbed them. by one of those guys. Yeah. Damn, it was bad. It happened all the time. He was the last member of the Whig Party. They didn't run him a second term. Here comes Franklin Pierce. Uh, he was a pals with Jackson, son of a Revolutionary War hero. He's from the North, but he was pro-slavery. They thought this was going to work. Uh, two months before the – this is crazy. Two months before his inauguration, he and his family were in a train crash, and the only casualty was his 11-year-old son. Damn. So his entire time in office, he's blacked out, drunk, and depressed. He's Fuck. the saddest guy of all time. He's not listening. His kid just died. His wife blamed him for the death constantly. Oh. She was like, we should have never been on that train. You just had to be the fucking president. Oh, well, you man. gave birth to him, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> that. you were on the train. You were. Oh, you had fun. Yeah, dude. Fuck. Uh, so he's there. During Pierce, they do the Transcontinental Railroad. This is this is like the real. This is a fuck up for the the North wants it to be from Chicago to L.A. or one of those places out west. The South wants it to be from Atlanta to L.A. In order to get it done, they have to get rid of the Missouri Line Compromise, which made it nothing north or south of here was the slave line uh they decided to make it so every new territory got to decide themselves they got to vote in order to get the transcontinental railroad um so this opened every single thing we did to build this nation ran into this slave problem yes every single thing we tried to do was like yeah but the fucking north south slave fucking yep. slave states non-slave states Jesus. we need to build a railroad across that's the first interstate yes thing the first interstate objective. Yeah, it's the first thing that it's the first thing that need you need a federal government. It's why we start the federal government got stronger and stronger, because every state gets to do their own thing. But you want to take a fucking train from one to the other, you guys, these two states have to make a compromise. Yeah. So you needed a federal government to make these. It was like the precursor to union non union. They just blow yeah, up yeah, a gigantic yeah. like flammable red. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's and it's uh, the other reason just to just as general thing that you, the federal government became what gave the federal government power was the states wanting parity with each other. Like when environmental laws became a thing, they were state laws. So like Indiana would make a law. You can't dump, you know, sludge into the river anymore. So every company in Indiana has to pay extra 
to do a better job of dumping their shit and take it to the ocean or somewhere else, ruin somebody else's life. Yeah. But so <laughs> next door to Indiana is Illinois, and they're like, we dump, we go, and we dump anything we want, yeah. and so all the business goes there, mm-hmm. and so the the Indiana, the Illinois company's like, we don't want to dump, we don't want to hurt the environment, but we can't compete with these guys. Yeah. Right. So they would go the so they all the states would go to the Fed and say, please pass a law that affects everybody yeah. so that we can all do the right thing that we want to do without having to get squeezed out by this guy. Yeah. And that worked until we started doing shit with Mexico and India and China. <laughs> um but anyway, go on. But yeah, so, it's it Taylor. Was, it was Where interesting to me. We're at uh I think Pierce, Pierce. right? On yeah. the on the Transcontinental Railroad. Yeah. That turns out to be like that's what started it. I mean, obviously, there's a ton of major factors, but that was like a big one because it opened what was called the Nebraska-Kansas Act, which is they got to decide to vote whether they were pro-slave or pro-abolition. So then a bunch of people just rushed in yeah, from, the, voted, from the north and the up. south, and they started fucking killing each other. What? It was the, it was I forget the names. They were pretty sick. It was like the Free Staters versus the Border Ruffians. This is where John Brown and his son was out there. Oh yeah, yeah. He's, they started hacking people with swords to death. Like Jesus. that was that was that was it. And Franklin Pierce was like, uh, he did nothing. He didn't get involved. Yeah, but dude, it must have been crazy when you had a bunch of slaves. Like this is wrong. You had to be like, nah. You no. couldn't. It must have been crazy to be like, nah. I don't think it is. Well, you just would pretend not to, or you just wouldn't. I mean, you'd see it on the newspaper was faded, and it yeah. was like, I don't, know, I don't know that much about it. <laughs> Just uh, not being able to go down. I'm with okay that to my slaves. I treat them okay. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> True. Yeah. Right? Tell them. That's right. <laughs> like, oh yeah, he's great. Yeah, he's all right. He's a, yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> no, and meanwhile, the North was starting to get. Uh, I mean, this is getting after Pierce is who? Buchanan. So yeah. Buchanan is the guy who Lincoln who uh, right before Lincoln. Yes. Right. Because the other thing that was going on is the North is industrializing and the North is starting to yes. build sweat houses and factories, and so part of the argument that people were having that is like the kind of argument we would have now if it would be interesting to take this culture with yeah. twitter and everything and supplant it to slavery days and how we would have handled that debate back then True, because there were people that were saying you know the north has free workers and a ton of them immigrants that had started and they're treated like garbage they're living like shit and there's, they're dying in large numbers and getting sick mm-hmm. uneducated not all, and being not allowed to be educated yeah. kids are working uh, heavy there's a ton long of southern, shifts southern political cartoons that are like that that are about how bad they were and like our slaves are like a member dancing. of the family yeah. we uh, we we give them their own house with their plot of land they get to do this mm-hmm. and that we you know most slave owners were this were better that this is the argument yeah. and that the north was just like wholesale destroying lives yeah and uh, you know read uh, uh, what's his name fucking uh, upton sinclair the what yeah. shit was going on in chicago and the slaughterhouse meat what's it called uh it's, uh, it's about the meat packing shit right yeah the jungle his, what's it called ju- the jungle yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, another important thing about that that point of the the industrialization of the north it just flooded with immigrants so yeah. now their population is so big that they get more votes, they get more electoral, count, like uh. all that. So now the South's like, we need to, we need to get power. We need so now we need more states. We need more states because uh. uh, otherwise they're going to abolish slavery and we're going to be poor. And but they're also hanging on oh. to a way of life in the South. Yeah. And in the North, they're not. They're trying to do anything that's new and anything that's next and anything that's large amounts of money and large amounts of industry. And they're 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 uh manufacturing in huge amounts in the south they're just trying to play a fiddle and whip a guy and uh, (laughs) grow grow a little tuft of cotton for one shirt every six months it's a good thing to point out it's important to know yeah this leads that was the fight it was an insanely different but we still wanted to be one country we wanted to be one country so it was this weird conflict that never went away so yeah, then, like, does it continue to morph till now? It's just like some dudes. It does. Chill it's a, we where we are heart, other dudes like no, we need to talk about. It. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of tight. But the, so okay, so what's his name? Now we're at James Buchanan, who's yeah. probably the worst. Yeah, I he think was just fro- he was frozen by two. He had so much pressure. He was a lawyer from Pennsylvania that was just about the law. Yeah, which was the last thing he needed to be as the president. Which was like, well, that's the rule. But he had all of Lincoln's problems with none of his charisma yeah. and guts. Yeah, and blood. That was you know, crazy. James Buchanan had the, the Dred Scott to kill. Dred Scott 
yeah. was under James Buchanan, which yeah. was where, if you don't know about that, that was about a slave living in free territory, and he was suing to get his freedom. Mm -hmm. It went all the way up to the Supreme Court where they ruled uh, he was an object, so he had no, he was yeah. not a citizen. Therefore, that ruling made sure every black person in America was an object yes, and not so. a citizen. And uh, Buchanan responded by saying, that's the law, it, that settles it. Gosh. Instead of standing up, right. he just had to follow the law. Yeah. So he was just like an extension of the court. Yeah. That's not, that wasn't his job. Yeah. Man, that's And that brought us to Lincoln. And as soon as Lincoln gets elected, the South secedes. Yeah, every state starts to say we're not America anymore. Like yeah. immediately before he takes yeah. office. It's also crazy checking in on the headlines and you're like, nah, they said you're a chair basically. And you're like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yes. Fuck. Uh, you got Lincoln though. You know Lincoln. Well, we could just maybe skip him because it'll be the whole fucking. Yeah. We could stop. I mean, look, we could Lincoln... stop with Lincoln. Let's stop True. with Lincoln. And then you go on to some guys you're interested in after Lincoln. All right. Yeah, we're good. We what can go as long as we want. Been talking for An hour. Okay. Well, Lincoln, you're not enjoying us. You're not having the time of your life. I'm having a great time. <laughs> I knew you would. This I'm is not, nice, I'm right? Not having a great time. You're not having a great time. No, I'm not. I hate this. Decent time. Really? No, I'm having a good time. <laughs> How much fun? You decide which one. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the thing I liked about, I, I mean, I gave you that book about Lincoln. Yeah. That's a great. Uh, what's his name? Carl Sandburg. It's a weird kind of stream of consciousness telling of Lincoln's story in four volumes. It's crazy. Just the warriors, just from when he took office. And um, when he was coming here, there was everything, hell was breaking loose, and there was supposed to be a January 6th. There yeah. was supposed to be one. What? There was a plan to stop the certifying of the vote. Mm -hmm. And so they went to uh, General, fuck, what was his name? He was the only American general then, because we didn't fight wars anymore. Yeah. So the um, army was kind of like not... You Fuck, know, I think he was the commander. He's, it, it's a name you just know when, when you hear it. Like Scott something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Winfield Scott. Winfield Scott. Yes. Perfect. So they went to Winfield Scott, the guys running the government, and then they said, we think there's going to be this thing where they're going to try to stop the... Uh... So he said, um, he said, if anyone... He did made a declaration he said, publicly. He said, if anyone tries to stop the counting of the votes and the democratic process from happening, either by force or by infiltration... I, I will stuff them into my cannon and fertilize my lawn with them. That's what he <laughs> Lincoln said. Lincoln said that? That's what he said. What? <laughs> no, and, Winfield uh, Scott. Oh, Winfield Scott yeah, said yeah, that. Yeah, but and what he did in real <laughs> fact, because he was a really smart guy, he gave all of the Capitol Police and all those guys that they had the, the day off, they said, go home. And he went and got uh, policemen from Baltimore, from New York City, all kinds of like badass cops. Mm -hmm. And he had them in plain clothes all over the Capitol, heavily, all heavily armed, but in Jesus. plain clothes. So, and people know, so if somebody started something, the guy would just go like this or elbow him or whatever. Yeah. But the appearance was that it was peaceful and that there was no military presence. Whoa. But nothing happened. Um, that's what it took to get Lincoln. Everybody, up to the minute that happened, everyone was like, I don't know if he's ever going to take office. Yeah. People believed he would never be president. Dude, he wasn't even on the what? ballot in the Southern states. Not even on the ballot. Yeah. What? He didn't win one southern state. A lot of people, big, big people, who yeah. would be like whoever now, wrote long things saying, don't take office. Your presidency, your the, the, your victory is hollow. Mm -hmm. It's not real. Not even just people from the south, but people from the north. They were, they, everyone was afraid that Lincoln was going to just immediately free the slaves and start war with the south. And the, his first inauguration, mm -hmm. he says... First thing, first thing out of his mouth is, I have no intention yeah, yeah. of freeing the Southern slaves or changing their slave laws. And yes, we will chase down and bring you back your slaves yeah. when they come up here within reason. He puts like a tiny thing of yeah. like, we're not going to like make it our obsession, but we will do it. Like so it's the it, first thing out of his mouth. That's what bothers me about people, like people that are critics of him, hang on to that. And they're like, you know, Lincoln didn't want to do it. It's like, dude, the whole time, that's what he wanted. Of course he did. That's what, again, it goes all the way back yeah. to the framers. They all wanted this to be a better country than it was. So they they knew they couldn't, they couldn't create a nation yeah. without slavery. Mm -hmm. So they said, let's create a nation where people can change peacefully. They can change not only leadership, but the laws that, you, that create a situation where 
people figure it out for themselves and move forward and change instead of like a constitution could have been a very permanent thing. It could have been a very solid permanent thing, but they actually made it elastic on purpose. Um, and that's, yeah, Lincoln was like, we'll do it, guys. Yeah. We'll do it. Yeah. Just, we need some fucking time. And boy, what it cost yeah. is crazy. And a lot of people who didn't want slavery were really angry at Lincoln for how hard he pushed that war and that mm -hmm. he didn't just settle it. Just let the South do whatever they want. We have we have our free blacks here. Mm -hmm. Let them take their chances down there. Um, you're killing millions or however many fucking, I don't know how many quarter, people it was. Like a quarter of a million people died in the Civil War? Yeah, probably around there. Something like at about least. how many we killed in Iraq in a day? Yeah. Pretty much. True. Yeah. yeah for, <laughs> less, for doing nothing. Less than doing Middle nothing. Eastern civilians. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Measure it like Persian weddings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, it was, yeah, Lincoln's the, Lincoln's the best. I, it I was really think, something. I mean, it just took a lot, close. a lot of political guts, a lot of doing, a lot of, oh, fuck. Yeah. This is going to suck. Just trying to talk to these fucking cunts from the South. That must be uh, nice. that it's just like, clearly this is for money. You know it's wrong. Yep. You know it's wrong. Yeah. It's, it's, dude, it's 1865. Well, it was the yeah. ultimate 1860. time. They of, know it's wrong. Well, and yeah. folks not wanting to say that shit's wrong. Yeah. And him, like... Not making them say it, but getting them to yeah, just one guy at a time, one guy at a time. Mm -hmm. He would just go around, get support here, get support there, put muscle in where he had it, and he fought a brutal, brutal war, a yep. fucking a, a incessant war. And he had to wait until he got a victory to fucking announce the Emancipation Proclamation. Oh, he was yeah. trying so hard to get it out, but his generals kept fucking up and losing. Oh, like, Fuck. And he would just be writing to these dudes like, go. Yeah, please do get, it. Get one. Get one. Like, I think he wrote it after Antietam, which was like a draw. <laughs> he was like, he That's draw pretty oh, well, good. Yeah, yeah, he did. He's like, "That's close enough." Here we go. We're Lenny's doing it. Shot. Yeah, and then he got his fucking head blown off by yeah. next to his wife. Yeah. Uh, and they put a little napkin, but that was what they did for him. They put a little na napkin back there <laughs> and hoped, but it was not a good. <laughs> it, was, it was not a very. He was alive for napkin. a while after. Yeah, that's what he I'm didn't saying. just like, die right away. He didn't have to die at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he didn't die right Pledge away. Death. Really? Yeah, Pledge he, of death. He was like alive in the yeah. he's like, hotel for just, like a and they're day. Like, we don't know how to do anything. Yeah, yeah. What play was he saying? Does anyone know? Fuck, I do know. What what, what play? What was the play? play? It was yeah. at the Ford's Theater. I don't remember the. Let me um, see what he was watching. Yeah, it was something good. Yeah, he was fixated. <laughs> he was into uh, it. He Hamilton. didn't notice the assassin. That was the weird thing. It was Hamilton. Yeah, it was a Hamilton. <laughs> yeah. He was sitting there like, what was it? Nice. He was sitting there watching it like, I got to pretend to like this. Yeah. It was fucking Hamilton. And then they shot him. He was like, thank God. <laughs> this place sucks. Christ, this shit <laughs> sucks so bad. <laughs> um, so that brings us to Johnson. So who, Johnson was great. the first, first uh, guy to be impeached. Was what? he impeached? Oh, yeah. Didn't... First guy to be impeached, yeah. Johnson shows up. This is great. He was, he was like a tough guy. He was supposed to be the counteraction to yeah. Lincoln. Well, he's one of the reasons the war was prolonged because everybody knew if we could just get rid of Lincoln, Johnson was behind him with there was a deal to be made. It was like don't it was like yeah. don't talk outside the family. He was like son, you know, yeah. Sonny liked my deal, didn't he? Sonny was hot for <laughs> yeah, my deal. Yeah. Johnson would have fucking settled in yeah. a minute. Johnson started his life as an indentured servant. No shit. And worked his way up. How sick is that? That's impressive. And then it, before his inauguration, he got fucked up on whiskey and just couldn't talk. <laughs> his inauguration, it was in the rain and the mud right after Lincoln got shot. Well, and he everyone was, was the like, first one. He's, he's the one who proved you can, you can impeach a president, mm -hmm. but you cannot get the fucking votes. It's a yeah. waste of time, and he ends up stronger. Yeah. It's the dumbest move in the world. It's, va it's vanity. Yeah. It's just uh, Congress hates the president. It's just bullshit. Yeah. But it doesn't accomplish anything. They, they. I don't remember why they went after him. Whatever he was Me very neither. corrupt. He's fucked up guy. I don't. Who knows? It's all mm -hmm. shit that I heard because of them. But they, they <laughs> impeached him and then failed to get rid of him. Really? I know nothing else about him. But, but I don't know either. But then fucking Grant. Grant, amazing guy. Great guy. Amazing guy. I feel like his presidency was a bit of a fucking letdown for how cool he was. I mean, he did so. Christing much, this guy. Oh, Grant. true. To to help the South, he was pretty good. What did he do? Well, and and say he was he was. Uh, okay. First of all, some people get on him because he owned a he owned us one slave oh, man. because his father 
his father-in-law, his wife's father, <sighs> yes. hated him because he was an abolitionist. I mean, he wasn't like an active abolitionist. Sure. But he was against slave, just for not having a slave. Yeah. Back then, if you didn't have a slave, you were a dick to certain yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> So you were like, put on a mask. Yeah, yeah. you were that guy. You were like, why yeah, exactly. do you have slaves? Yeah, and they're like, why is this guy making me feel uncomfortable? Yeah. <laughs> so he hated him because he had slaves and he didn't want one. So mm. he gave him one for as a wedding present, like to spite him. What a dick. Yeah. So Jesus. Uh, so Grant made the guy his partner, and yeah. they started a little business together, which he then freed the guy and gave him the business. Yeah. He, so he, he made that go, guy. He would go life. work with the slaves. But He'd they, be out there with them working. Yeah. He, and then he, while he was like financially ruined, yeah. he freed his slaves instead of selling them. But he had one, though? Uh, I'm not sure. He might have had one at that That's point. The story. the story I just told you yeah. is, I think, his slave story. I don't think yeah. he had a bunch of them. He, so had, he had one slave and he freed him <sighs> instead of selling them. But his and father-in-law, he, and, he, and he gave him a business that yeah. he had started with him. Yeah, his father-in-law history fucked him. He was like, "Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Here's yeah, that's right." Here's and then he was in he the did, army. Absolutely. <laughs> he was in the army, and he went. Uh, one of his first uh, jobs was uh, outpost near San Francisco. It was in the middle of nowhere. There was no. I mean, it was in the desert of California. Mm. He was the only one there, and he was a, fa- a family man. He loved his family. He missed his bed. Missed his mm. family so much, and he started just getting drunk. And they, somebody came to drop the mail and found him passed out drunk, and that was his only experience with alcohol. He was not; he was a very rigidly living guy, and he was thought known as a drunk for the rest of his life. Really? There's every arguments. time he had a political problem, they'd go, "He's drinking." There's arguments. <laughs> There's rumors he was fucked up at Shiloh because he sat on, because he sat under a tree in the rain. They found him sitting under a tree in the rain outside of a military hospital. It also is funny cuz Shiloh he woke up on day 2 of it. Yeah. At like the start of day 2 or maybe it was the start of day 1 when it started. He was yeah. late to get there. So everybody was like he was hammered. But what? if he was hammered, that's very funny. To be like, "Oh shit, there's a war." Oh. <laughs> like, so oh. after up, he like, was after here. he was he had won the civil war. Uh, started really reconstruction, like started like really. He was in earnest wanting to get opportunities and, e- and equity for black people, e- equal opportunity for black people. And then he retired and was in New York. And he became a New Yorker. He became a big, big part of this city. Yeah. And he had a son named Kermit, who I think his name was Kermit. <laughs> who that was the eighteen hundreds. Yeah. Sure. So Kermit invested <laughs> what a fucking in, great name. That's invested hilarious. his money and all of his father's money with some asshole guy who took it and just left town and just oh. took all of their money, every penny that they had. And uh, so Grant went to visit Vanderbilt, who's outside of the um, Grand Central Station. Is a great uh, statue of him. I think it was Vanderbilt. Yeah, went to the richest man in New York City. Um, who was a hard ass, a guy who didn't care for charity or anything, but he brought his, he brought, sure, uh, what's his name? Uh, the sword that was, uh, who, yeah, who's, yeah. Uh, e- Lee. Well, Robert, he had Robert E. Lee's sword that he um, surrendered to yeah. him. What? He had his Congressional Medal of Honor and the Bible that he was, that he took the oath of office in. And he gave them, he said, I want to sell these to you because I have no money. And Vanderbilt said, Jesus Christ, <laughs> yeah, the president. Dude. Holy shit. We're not doing that. He said, I, I'm i going to d- uh, donate these to the national museums and I'll give you a, you know, like he bought them for the nation. Did he, but did he buy oh. his biography? Isn't that what he No, so he here's what happened with the biography. It's the yeah. best part of his story. And it's actually his greatest legacy. But his biography, his autobiography is like the greatest ever written. Yeah. So... Um, he met two guys on a train. He was didn't do he'd do anything for money at this point. His 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 <laughs> wife was very young. <laughs> he was broke two guys after on everything a train. he'd been through. He was broke, and his wife was young, and he was going to leave her uh, um, destitute. So he met two guys on a train. They're like, "Why don't you write your autobiography? We'll pay you a thousand dollars." And he was like, "Done." <sighs> what? Oh, so then, <laughs> about a week later, he meets up with. Um, uh, uh, Mark Twain was like his best friend. Mm. And Mark Twain said, uh, why don't you write your autobiography, uh, your memoirs? And he said, I'm doing that for these guys. And he goes, what are they paying you? And he goes, $1,000. And he's like, dude, <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> and he says, give me the book. I'll publish. Because he, he, Mark Twain had started his own publishing company because uh, yeah. he hated publishers. He said, I'll publish it and I'll help you write it. 
And he said, I promised those two guys. He's like, did you sign something? He goes, no, but I did. I like, I gave my word. Fuck. So, uh, so, um, Twain, uh, or his real name, what's his, uh, Clemens Clemens yeah. goes travels to, I think he went to see Sherman. He went to see, he's like, I need to see somebody who trust who, you know, mm. he'll listen to. So he went to visit Sherman and said, please, like, please get him to do this. So Sherman wrote a telegram to Grant saying, for for the love of God, give the book to Clemens. <laughs> that's what the that's what the thing. That's all. Awesome. So he wrote his biography autobiography. And the, the remarkable thing about it that I read was that there's like no adjectives in it. It's like all verbs and nouns. The entire book what? is verbs and nouns because he just says what happened. It's a very well written book. And uh so Clemens turned it into this special edition that you had to order one. You could get any color you wanted. And it was the first blockbuster book in American yeah. history. It made like half a million dollars in what? the first month. Meanwhile, he had a goiter that was growing and growing. Three stogies. You always uh, see him with the stogies. Yeah. Died of uh, throat cancer like right as he finished the book. Whoa. And then his wife was made for life. Her yeah. first check from Twain was like $400,000. Whoa. Yeah, I think he wasn't he buried here. And yes. this monument. And he's buried in, in Grant's tomb on the yes. in Harlem. And when he died, the nor there was this huge funeral, and it was northern and southern soldiers. Southern soldiers were allowed to put back on their southern uniforms because it was a big thing that his casket was carried yeah. by north and south. It's too bad uh, you can never get away with wearing a Confederate uniform in Harlem these days. No, because no, no, no. that would get be a away treat. with. <laughs> yeah, but he was he was fucking awesome at the when when Lee surrendered. He was very like I mean it was it was unconditional surrender. Mm -hmm. So he was like, you guys are gonna fucking give up, but he was like, keep your guns, go home, start rebuilding. Mm -hmm. Like he could have fucking destroyed the South. Yeah, yeah. And he was very chill. I think Custer stole the fucking sword. He hated Did Custer. He? I think Custer stole Lee's sword. Is Maybe he got right? it back. But I think the story was Grant wouldn't accept it or something he along those him lines. To keep it. And yeah, Custer, Custer was, was bloodthirsty. Guy. And then on on the parade back into Washington, yeah. Grant was obviously out front. Custer fucking rode ahead. And Grant was like, this motherfucker. <laughs> Custer was With the his man. Blonde hair. If you look at if you look into Custer, he was pretty fucking. Yeah, cool. I don't know much about him. He fucked up Jeb's store at Gettysburg, which was mm -hmm. pretty cool. Because Jeb was the man. And he I'm wrote in, about him. he was with the Michigan Cavalry, and he was like, come on, you Wolverines, and fucking led him into a charge. That's why they're the Michigan Wolverines, Damn. all that shit. So then it's you got cool. <laughs> Hayes, who undid all of this yeah. cool stuff for black people. It's uh, all And politically, very... just he didn't want to get deal with it, so he just, uh, he just did away with it. And then you got fucking, who else? Then it goes... I Garfield. Then I get bleary. Yeah, this is all, this is like the Gilded Age, is what it's mm -hmm. called. It's all yeah. shit. yeah. But this is where shit like it goes from we ended slavery to now just right back into it just just, just racism, really? not slavery, but just every law against them subjugation. Just it like just every it became the same obsession as before. Yeah, but without slavery, it just became all about not letting them vote, keeping them off. The and that goes ballot. all the way up until like now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we're just, just yesterday. We, fig yeah. we figured it out. We yesterday. figured it out yesterday. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, today, Arkansas. We got a nice little nation. Here. Yeah. Louisiana cleaned up their act a little. True. And Alabama. My favorite True. president, just jumping way the fuck yeah. ahead, is uh, Nixon is my favorite. Dude, he's awesome. He's the best. And again, as a character. Yes. Nixon gave the country one great gift that I, I wish was like, I wish it was taught like the speech that Lincoln has on his monument oh. and the ask not what your country mm -hmm. and all that shit. The greatest thing that he did, because it speaks more to what Americans live, is that when Nixon was shamed and destroyed and had to leave office, he had to fucking resign. He had to give after a couple of I'm not a crook and this is all bullshit. He had yeah. to go and say, well, all right, I'm going to go. <laughs> and Still not a crook, but I'm going to get George, out of here. Uh, Gerald Ford would take the you know, oath of office at this time in this office. And he left. But before he left, he gave a speech to his staff, um, to the White House staff. That was impromptu. It was just on his way to the to the to mm -hmm. the uh, helicopter. And he's just and he's copiously crying in the speech. <laughs> There's video of it that you can see. 
You have to try to find the whole thing because there's clips that you can find on YouTube. But I actually ordered from C-SPAN a DVD of the whole speech. And um, they're all bawling, the whole staff, and his family standing behind him. And he just tells them, look, don't. He's encouraging them. He said, this is a tough moment for all of us. He said, first of all, I don't want to encourage, I don't want to discourage young people from taking, from being in public service. He was afraid of what would, what the, what would happen. What has happened. Yes. He was right. He said, don't be discouraged from public office. It's a great calling. And he said, and for, for any mistakes that we made and all the, everything that's happened, not one person in this administration, um, gained financially from anything from being here left richer than when they got here he made it first so he defended everybody that was there and then he just starts reflecting he reads from teddy roosevelt's uh autobiography from his diary when teddy's uh wife and mother died at the same night they both died at the cholera or whatever on the same night he was going from room one room to the oh, other. Oh, yeah. And they both died. And he was like at 21 or something. And he wrote this quote that was like, the light has gone out and it'll be darkness forever. And he said, he, so he read it to his staff and he said, that's how he felt having lost his wife and his mom. And he went on and had this incredible life. So he's trying to say, don't. So he says, no, don't be discouraged. Never be petty. Uh, don't hate your enemies. Because that's when you'd start to destroy yourself. He yeah. start he gets it really introspective about everything that happened without talking about it, and then he says it's horrible. He goes, um, he says uh, they'll never write a book about my mother, but she was a saint. And, oh man! And I think of her like one of his brothers had tuberculosis, and they had no money, so she moved to Arizona where the air was better. Mm. And she was a nurse, a wet nurse. She nursed other people's babies for money in order that her son could live in Arizona. And he talks about his father, who was a lemon farmer, who had a failing lemon farm. And then he was a uh, switchman on a, on a street car. And he just talks about his parents and, and what they did for him and all that shit. He just, he, and he just cries. Oh, it was, it's fucking beautiful, but it shows you a, dis, a man at the, at the height of American experience destroyed from that height which is the worst thing that can happen yeah. to a person is to get that <laughs> high and fall and he just went here's how this feels he just told the world this is how this feels this is what this looks like yeah. <laughs> and uh, here's all I can say and then he went and then he left incredible I mean he was one of the most influential people in American history yeah he ended Vietnam right yes that I mean, was he, already about he was done. in a he was in he was fucking um, Eisenhower's vice president he there's there's uh there's a guy we know that's a bit of a conspiracy guy mm -hmm. but he's been pretty correct on everything so far and he's got a book coming out <laughs> on watergate yeah okay and about how that was more it was a little darker than it seemed like so his i opponents... knew a guy back when i was first living in the city as a comedian um there was a guy named frank um gannon who had a gannon frank gannon wrote speeches for nixon and was a very close friend of his. And weirdly, he became the guy who books the comedians on Letterman. Oh, and when I moved to New York back in 1990 or so, being on Letterman was the all anybody wanted. So Gannon was the most important person in comedy at the time. And he was a strange guy who was very serious. And he would just come and he'd watch you. And if he liked you, he'd get Morty to come. And maybe you'd be on the show. So he liked me. He never get, got me on the show. But he liked me. So I, I went to Letterman's office and met him. And I asked him about Nixon because he, he wrote, Nixon has one big biography called RN that Gannon co-wrote. And he told me that when you get a few drinks in Nixon, he says, the same people that got, the Kennedys got me. It's the same, really? same people that got, yeah, he said it's the same machine Whoa. that took out yeah, John that was and Robert, Kennedy. came after him. He said they just couldn't use bullets anymore because it was getting too. They were getting. They were That's on exactly what we said. Yeah, yeah. This is we yeah. said that without. And then him. Watergate was. He said Watergate was something that happened all the time. It was just yeah. like and still does. I mean, it's not yeah. like oh my oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, like, yeah. It's, like, it's how things are done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a safe for the million dollars in it. What president doesn't have a safe for the million dollars? Yeah. yeah. 
it was uh so that's yeah. that's Nixon's story. That was that was Nixon's story. He didn't Whoa. say it in public sure. because the same as he conceded the presidency to Kennedy, which Kennedy stole. Um I mean, oh, everyone knows that. That his yeah. father took suitcases of money to delegations and yeah. stole the presidency. And Nixon knew it. And he was like, I'm not going to. Uh, that's not good for the country to get into it. That's why he resigned instead of standing trial. And that's why he didn't talk about that. That's, that's the story, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's wild, a good, that's a good uh, most interesting president. Most interesting, I think, to me. Yeah. I mean, Johnson was also a fascinating guy. Yeah. Johnson was, and Reagan was uh, kind of an empty headed genius, incredible, knows how yeah. to just be. As long as somebody else is in the room, Reagan was brilliant. But I'm not sure he had any thoughts. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's people like that. Yeah, yeah. He he was like an actor that was He's like, an I guess I'll be a Republican yeah. while he was there. And then, which was which was pretty admirable at the time because he was, actually no, it wasn't because that was in the middle of the Red Scare. He was like one of the guys being like, you're a communist. <laughs> and he just became the man. <laughs> My favorite film of Reagan is Larry King interviewing him after he was shot and saying, so what do you, what do you, how do you, what do you feel about this guy? And he said, well, I just pray for him. He's a sick man. He's just, you know, I found out later that he's, he's sick. He's mentally ill. So we add him to our prayers. And uh, we hope him for the best for him. And he says it with this big. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, he's like, yes. we're fucking that guy up. <laughs> yeah, 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 oh yeah. yeah, he's. I hope he's doing good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's doing great. Yeah. Um, I think that yeah, that should be it, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I think, think so. that's that fun enough. Fun you, you had fun. Yeah, it was good. Why do you accusing me of having fun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Uh, thanks for yeah, thanks for doing thank it, man. You. Sure, thanks for asking. Thank it's fun. Goodbye. Wow, wow. Yeah, let's just do that. Uh, yeah, we're not going to do ads on the next one. We got to do ads on this let's one. Let's do it, yeah. Can't do ads on the next one. No, nah, dude. In the middle of that, you can't drop an ad. No. So, Man Shane's po- Man Shane's Secret Podcast is brought to you by Hawthorne. I bet you think it really stinks in here. And it did. But now we've got Hawthorne. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> what? Why are they saying we stink? Why did they dude? say... And it did. But now we've got Hawthorne to make us look good, feel good, and smell good. Hawthorne makes it quick and easy to be your best with skincare and hair care made just for you. I don't know what I need to... I don't. I didn't know what I needed, so I took their fucking quiz. It's super easy, and after answering questions like, how much do I sweat and how dry is my skin, they made me a custom box of products. Oh, yeah. Boys. Yeah, the quiz. We took the quiz. How'd the cream make you feel? How'd this clone smell? I'll That's tell what you what. Hawthorne in this email said... Boys, boys, how'd the cream make you feel? No, you don't want to know. I can't talk. That's triple that X, dude. I can't talk about it. I'll tell that. you how the cream felt. Made me jizz all over myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to shower. I'll tell you what. I used to like Manscaped. When I, when I remember reading Manscaped's ad, and I was like, I love Manscaped. This stuff sucks. I like Hawthorne, dude. Hey. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I like Manscaped. Hawthorne's the best, dude. I did, yo, I've been using... Uh, I, mean, <laughs> I was just about to start endorsing... Oh, yeah, true. Hawthorne... Dude, Hawthorne's Matt, let me tell you something, you <laughs> motherfucker. Hawthorne stands by their customers, so if you're not completely satisfied, they'll re- retail your products for free based on your feedback and pay for the shipping. So there's truly no risk at all. That's the Hawthorne way. Normally, when you're buying cream and cologne, yeah. there's a pretty high risk. Oh, yeah. Right now, there's no risk. Not at all. Dude. <laughs> all right? Not at all, dude. Look so at my make face. sure. I've been using the face wash, dude. Look at that. <laughs> really? Clean, dude. Touch me. I haven't I even gotten you. I haven't touch even me. received my sample. Somebody touch me. I beg you. So make. <laughs> I'll rub you. <laughs> it's good. They're, so I make... do the clone. Maybe we should put on a lot of their clone before we go to our other th- to, <laughs> to our friend's house. Spray ourselves. So make sure you're ready for anything or anyone that comes your way by taking Hawthorne's quiz today. So make sure True. you're ready to fucking if you're in Walmart, oh, make yeah. sure you're ready for anybody. True. Go to Hawthorne.co and use promo code Drenched to get ten percent off your first purchase. That's Hawthorne H A W T H O R N E dot C O. Promo code drenched. Ooh, Hawthorne.co. Promo boy. code drenched. Yeah, you want to smell good and get, yeah, it's good. You get them smell goods going on. You got this one? Lucy. Yes. Guys, just give me some rap about Lucy. Like, you know, you know the favorite flavors. I right? love it. Mango's my shit. 
because although I'm addicted to it, I'm still a fucking fruity. True. Fruity guy. I'm still a bit of a fruit man. Yeah, you want to enjoy it. You got to be healthy when you're doing it. For sure. That's how I get my fruits. Yeah, so you guys know the deal. If you're addicted to nicotine. That's a funny joke. If you're addicted to nicotine, go to Lucy, I know that doesn't work. Lucy's safe. It's the chemical. They isolate the chemical nicotine and make it taste yummy. They make it taste good. So not only are the chemical itself is addicting, they give it a good taste. Exactly. To make it even more fucking enjoyable. Exactly. That's that's all we can do now is just enjoy ourselves, guys. Yeah. So, guys, check out the full line of products at lucy.co and use the promo code DRENCHED at checkout. That's lucy.co, and be sure to use that promo code DRENCHED. And if you're a listener from Canada, Lucy is now available at ca.lucy.co. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical, but also that's why you like it. That's why you like it, and that's, that's why, why it's you fun. like it. And probably the baby was probably on nicotine when he had that quick reaction time to get True. that guy. He probably you know, had some trouble. You play Red Dead? Yeah. You I can played. take tobacco to... Can you really? You can take Lucy to fucking... The golden eye. Yeah, there's a lot of um, luck. Yeah. So, guys, I'm going to be on my fucking dumb tour Ooh. forever. I'm going to be on the road forever. Here I go again. So, April 28th to 30th, that's this weekend, I'll be in Indianapolis. Ooh, tickets good. are going fast. There's there's some tickets left, I think. May 6th, I'll be in Manchester, England. May 8th, Leeds, England. May 9th, Glasgow, Scotland. May 12th, Dublin. 13th, London. 13th, London. So this is a, this has been a big confusion for a lot of people. The first show is at Leicester Square. I believe it's sold out. The second one is at 02 Shepherd's Bush Empire. Don't worry about what it fucking time it says on the tickets or whatever. Just get there at night <laughs> and wait. I think that's the first like real theater I've ever headlined. Really? London. So yeah, London please, too? please come to that. Because if that doesn't sell out, I'm going to feel like a fucking doofus. You got to get Jason Statham out too. Oh, I Just will. Get Statham out, dude. Say, yo, welcome to the show. Welcome. Welcome. Yo. Uh, <laughs> June 3rd through 5th, Philly. Already sold out. Not a big deal. June 6th through 11th, Brea, California. Whatever. St. Louis, Austin, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, San Francisco, Brisbane, Australia, Sydney, Australia, Adelaide, Australia, Perth, Melbourne. Let's go. Ooh, my goodness. And I'm then gonna, what? And then I'm dead. Yeah, true. After that whole tour, then I will be dead. Mummify your remains, dude. Place you in the fucking hallway at Helium just as a mummy. Be tight. Dude, Bananas Comedy Club. That's the big one. That's the end. That's the absolute end of my just wicked run, dude. One show a month for four months. <laughs> Where are you going? Bananas. Rutherford. It, it, how is this not? It's sold out. It's I don't know. Be. I'm bringing Sid and Butterly, so it'll be nice. We're going to do stand up. Oh, shit. At the end of it, we'll just do you a little. You're going to do a bit of a live stoner dad, but yeah. just never to never to be seen again. Live. A little live, dude. A little. Well, at the end of the shows, we'll have a nice. Oh, Me and Sid have been having that's fun. this weekend. It. Yeah, this weekend. Bananas. It's Bananas time. Comedy Club. North Jersey. I mean, dude, New York. You it's have not no sold excuse. out yet, so no, get not tickets. At not at all. I don't think it's close, but it'll be fun. It's, it's gonna a be new fun. room. That's why. That's why. Yeah, I thought it was the tiny room. Is it in, the new room? In, the other one used to be in. It's not the one by Dad. It's not in the most. Bing, da bada Bing. Really? Now you're at yeah, it's somewhere. Else. Well, it's Rutherford. Whatever. This will be which fun. is right next to it. It'll be fun, we're, we're, dude. I've been having me and me and said the kid have been having a good time. Yeah. So we'll get the Butterly Man, dude. It's gonna be. It'll be a good show. Gardini. We'll have the absolute SS himself, <laughs> superstar. Oh, SS Gardini, <laughs> the old SS officer, S-S-S-S Sean Gardini. Gardini. <laughs> I was disappointed no one yelled eight off at, at Chris when he got on. Someone stage. did, I think. Someone yelled. Someone hit right. him with a sponge. I went outside to hear. If, yes, he gets yeah. hit with a sponge. No, he, he he got hit with turd. I think actually. turd's, turd's one that's, the that's vintage. Tough. That means you're a super. That means you're True, an OG fan. True. Also, I would like to get Gus the Groundhog going for Nate Marshall. <laughs> nice. That's what I was thinking about. I'd like for him to be called Gus. That'd be nice. Gus the Groundhog. <laughs> That's his rap name. <laughs> what do you got? Um, the Drip at the Stand, uh, Wednesday, May 4th at 7 p.m. That one's going to be fun. It's on my Instagram. Nice. And then the Dog House at Sesh, Friday, May 13th. Friday the That'll 13th, very spooky. That will be a spooky time. There. Guys, we're about to go do something. Could change our lives forever. True. Thank well, you for listening. Adios.